beautiful, fantastic, wonderful woman that I am obsessed with. This is my really great friend Jill. And this is her beautiful mother Amy, who I just met today, and it's, I'm so excited! And we're gonna make some chocolate chip cookies. And well, first of all, we have these beautiful cocktails that Amy made us with Louisiana peaches. Rest in peaches. Rest in peaches, so good. A little Tito's vodka. I mean, I don't know what your Saturday morning's been like, but mine's been pretty good. I love to bake, and um, cookies are my very, very favorite thing to do. And um, I have friends who need to eat gluten-free cookies, and I want to learn how to make those for them. And I know they're delicious too, so I'm going to love eating them as much as I am preparing them for my friends. If you're just interested in starting to bake, if just knowing about gluten-free baking, cookies are a really good place to start because um, there are different types of flour, and as you probably already know, cookie flour, like what we would bake cookies with, is pretty low on gluten content because gluten is what makes things really tough and gives bread a lot of structure and we don't want our cookies to be super tough. Who wants really, I mean we're tough cookies, but you know, <laughs> we don't want to eat tough cookies. I am interested what you think about this recipe actually, like just staring at it, we have half a cup of butter, third a cup of sugar, three fourths a cup of brown sugar, a couple eggs. I mean, does that look a lot different to you? From that looks normally? very, very familiar. The only thing that I do, I have a little secret piece that I put into mine, is a little bit of molasses. Oh, we can do that. I add that in <laughs> addition to the brown sugar and the regular awesome. sugar, the white sugar, I put a little bit of molasses. That would ingredient. be, I mean, you could totally do that. The only and I use, the, I use grandma's. So oh, perfect. perfect. Yeah, I have, you yeah, have. she can see it. I have grandma's molasses over there. Okay. So preferably when you're doing, one of the things that you want to always consider when you're doing gluten-free baking is it's best when all of your ingredients are at room temperature. That would have required me getting up early and getting <laughs> everything out and having it be at room temperature, which I didn't do. So none of my ingredients, well, my butter and my eggs are not at the room temperature. They should be. They've been sitting out for a little bit, but they're not quite where they should be. But the creaming method is... Basically, you're creaming your fat and your sugar together. So we want to cream our butter and our sugar together in our stand-up mixer with our paddle attachment. And then we're going to add in eggs and our, all of our liquids and then um, slowly incorporate our flour. So we've cut off our butter, we've put it in the mixer, and we're making sure that our bowl is properly... Look how crowded this table is, you guys. <laughs> Have you ever seen my island this crowded? Um, and then Jill, if you wouldn't mind switching the oven to 325 yes. so that it's preheated by the time we put our cookies in. Now why 325, Casey? Okay, so I usually bake at 350. 350? Mm -hmm. Okay, 325 is, honestly when it comes to gluten-free baking, if you were to bake at 350, not, uh, nothing bad would happen if that's what you, mm -hmm. if that was your preference. Mm -hmm. um, I am the kind of person that when it comes to gluten-free cookies, because there's less structure because we've taken out the okay. gluten, mm -hmm. 325 gives me more time to check if something is wrong. Okay. <laughs> so we have three fourths a cup of brown sugar. Throwing it in. And that's dark brown sugar. It is dark brown sugar. So there's a little bit of molasses in that too. Absolutely. So. And if you prefer light brown sugar, that's also okay. You know, make people have such different tastes when it comes to chocolate, even just chocolate chip cookies. Yes. You know, a lot of people like um, sort of the crispier like Chips Ahoy type chocolate chip cookies. Some people like really soft pillowy <laughs> cookies. I'm more of a soft pillowy kind of person. Um, okay, so we have, I'm sorry, we did a third cup of white sugar. So we are just going to lock our little stand up and start creaming. All right, so we have creamed our butter and our sugar together and now we're gonna add two eggs, one at a time, make sure they get incorporated mm -hmm. well. And if you're really responsible, you crack these over a separate bowl so you don't get shells. <laughs> it's okay. But who has time for that? Not me. <laughs> so we've incorporated our eggs. I know I said incorporate them one at a time, but I'm just, I'm with these beautiful women and I'm like, I'm forgetting what I'm supposed to do. Drinking. We're just yeah, going to a pizza And we're drinking tequila. Peach, the peach fuzz. Actually, it's vodka. Oh, it's vodka. We're drinking Tito's vodka. It looks beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm just going to say that about it. There's nothing better than butter and sugar, you know? We're aerating it a little bit, so it's getting the sugar, the brown sugar is getting a little bit lighter. See, I never do that, Casey, and I'm learning a lot. Oh, no? I never put it up higher. 
I put it up a little bit higher just so that the um, the egg whites get nice and fluffy. Mm -hmm. I never thought that, to do that. That's, I've learned something already. As we know, egg yolks are fat, egg whites are protein. Protein provides structure, so if we just aerate ah. those egg whites a little bit, that's going to help us because we don't have the structure building help from gluten. So let me hope we can get. Yep, we have two teaspoons of vanilla, and then I'm going to let Amy add her molasses because that is okay. her special deal. And again, if you're responsible, you measure this out over something else. Yeah. <laughs> Are we responsible? No. It's just vanilla. If it was salt, that might be different. Let's not yeah. it. We're drinking vodka at, I guess it's 12. <laughs> it's noon. Okay. And this just kind of gives it, it the, the brown sugar helps, but this, the molasses just does something that's, it's worth it. It really awesome. is. You'll see. I can already smell the molasses and it smells it's good. Oh, it's, it's good. It smells so good. And we're going to mix our dry ingredients together before we start incorporating them. Make sure your baking soda is gluten free. You'd be surprised. Gluten is an excellent preservative. Um, so when you are making cookies or baked goods for your gluten free friends, just double check your ingredients listing and make sure because gluten finds its way into all sorts of things. So I'm going to add a, tea a teaspoon of baking soda yes, to my flour. And the same of Baking powder. Yep. That's great. And then what else do we need? Some xanthan gum, right? Yes. One teaspoon. We don't have any gluten in these cookies, obviously. So we need to create some of that elasticity again. And that is what xanthan gum is for. If you would have just put this in between your fingers with some water, it would get so gummy and so mm -hmm. sticky. And you could almost like just take it between your fingers and see the strings between your fingers. Mm -hmm. Double check that your flour bin that you, you are using does not have it. Um, but if it doesn't, definitely add a little bit. So we're just doing what, like a half teaspoon? Is this uh, a full teaspoon? Full teaspoon? Okay. So we forgot the salt. It's a half teaspoon of salt? Yes. And we've used unsalted butter. Butter? Butter? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Let me put my hand yeah. in there because it's perfect. Okay, okay, Beautiful. Go. And now what are you going to do? You're supposed to do this. Throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> just Slowly incorporate this. As you are turning your mixer, is that what you would do? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Perfect. Do like a splash at a time, let it get mixed, and then continue. Mm -hmm. What would you do? I do that, I probably do it in about um, maybe thirds. Maybe I thirds? I probably okay. tend to do that just because you, the less time you mix it, the more tender your cookies are going to be. So, and it know? makes sense with, with what you, because you have gluten cookies, I would. and That's the right. more you mix them, the tougher your right. gluten gets. So We don't have to worry about that. That's We're right. really that's why, you, that's why you can have a cocktail and date. <laughs> right. Because you don't have to be as worried about messing up. How's it looking to you? It's looking fabulous. Looking good? I love the color. It's kind of caramel. Mm -hmm. So great. Yeah, we're we're doing, doing like a cup and a half of chocolate chips, I think. Check. And that, of course, is personal preference. Too. Yeah, one or half. Doesn't that dough just like oh, double it? Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead, Jill. Okay. Yeah, that color yeah, is yeah, beautiful. Gorgeous. Well, I'm very partial to parchment paper okay. and for a couple of different reasons. Now, I know it's a little bit wasteful, but I try to use it, you know, through the whole batch. But yeah. um, I just like the way, especially if your oven is not just perfect in the way yes. it bakes, I think it's, it's, it's predictable and it keeps the cookies from getting too brown on the bottom and I, I want it to be pretty evenly cooked. So that's kind of my theory. And, right. and because, um, and you know, the cookie sheets can be different colors and if you've used them for a long time, they can get darkened and that kind of changes the, like the chemistry a little bit. That's okay though, the, the parchment is perfect. Anyway, so we've got some parchment on the cookie sheet and we're gonna make, um, and we're gonna make scoops. And I'm gonna make these kind of generous sized because- This is um, a smaller scoop, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller, but yeah. also again, I think it just comes out a little bit better if the cookie's not too small. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, you know, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna say I'm gonna have one cookie, <laughs> make it a good big cookie. Make it a good size. You cookie. might as, you might as well go for it, right? Yeah. I know that we're not gonna eat all of the batch. What I tend to do is um, go ahead and scoop them out. Yeah. And put them in um, a container that I can put in the freezer, so they're already scooped out individually. And then you can take out just how many you want to eat. And put it yes when you're ready to eat them. So that way you always ha can have fresh baked cookies. This so. is what we've scooped. We've just done six, so that if there's a little bit of spread, they're not going to roll into each right. other. Cookies were in there for 12 minutes, mm, something like that. It's 10, 12 minutes. We were we were watching them closely. And I am pretty picky about the way the cookies bake and then what you do with them after they're finished. Now it is tempting. Um, 
but I, I have lots of cookie sheets. That's one of the, the rules of thumb for me so that I don't have to take them off of this too quickly. Yes. So I let them cool for a pretty long time on this cookie sheet on their parchment before I move them. But then, you know, and I say pretty long time, 10 minutes. Okay. Anyway, and then I can move them to a rack. But I just feel like they hold their, the, the structure's gonna hold up and you, know, you don't want them breaking on your rack. Can you see these? They're beautiful. They look really great. Yeah. What do you think? Mmm. Really good. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Too crunchy, too. Mm. The edges are really a little crispy, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. I can taste the molasses in a great way. Mm -hmm. It adds that extra. It does. Mm -hmm. But the middle is still chewy. Mm -hmm. oh, very much. It gets just a little crisp around the edges. I think it looks a little like just how it is on the top. It looks a little different to me. The texture looks, the texture a, little looks a little different. But like on the inside, it tastes exactly the same. It does. I think it's very rich, and um, yeah, I think it looks the same on the inside too. Yeah, I do too. It like has the same structure. I want to say a really big thank you to Jill and Amy for coming over today. Amy is visiting Jill from Louisiana. This is time out of her vacation with her daughter to come and do this with me, and I'm just so thrilled. And I've had. So much fun. We I think we've been together for four hours just <laughs> talking and doing this. It's been the best. So thank you guys oh, it's so the much best for coming. Day, Kason. I love you. <laughs> thank you guys for watching Cooking Kason. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. Give this video a like. Do you like crispy chocolate chip cookies? Do you like pillowy chocolate chip mm. cookies? Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!